Hello guys, good morning. You are welcome to my YouTube channel, the SPC Tutorials. As you all know, my name is Dr. Joseph or Mr. Explicit. Please, as you are watching this video, endeavor to subscribe, like, share, and comment. In today's video, we shall be discussing a very important topic in the world of science, and that topic is phylum core data. And we are discussing evolution. So you see, evolution of core data or evolution of phylum core data. Now, before I jump into today's uh, class. I want to say I'm really, really sorry uh, as regards the video of yesterday because while the video was going on, it started raining, so I couldn't just stop it because I've gone a very long way, all right? Trust me, by God's grace, the video of today is going to be top, that is top notch, top notch, all right? So let's get started. Final call data. Now, final call data belongs to subphylum details to matter. Alright, so phylum detail stomata. Why the organisms themselves are called deuterostomes? The subphylum is called deuterostomata. Before we start going into deuterostomes, alright, which, which are just under the phylum called data, alright. Now, there are four distinctive features or characteristics that these organisms possess. They are four in number, all right? Now, what are these four uh, distinctive characteristics or features? They are one, possession of waiting notochord. Possession of notochord. Now, how would you describe notochord in codex? The statement that chordates uh, are actually the most commonly known organisms on Earth, and of course, humans also belong to this phylum called data, alright? So please, the word called data was coined. That is, that is notochord. With the fact that they possess notochord, hence they are called chordates, alright? It is because of this notochord they possess that gives them uh, the word Coordinates or final chord data. Now, the uh, uh, notochord, notochord is a longitudinal rod, longitudinal rod of cartilage. Right, it is what a longitudinal rod of cartilage that is found between the digestive tracts digestive tracts and the nerve cord to be specific dorsal nerve cord so please the rod like structure of cartilage that is found between the digestive tracts and the dorsal nerve cord is called what notochord it is called notochord please the notochord is what gives rise to the vertebral column, the vertebral column, otherwise called waiting backbone. Good. Since it gives rise to the vertebral column, otherwise called backbone, I can say that notochord is the precursor for vertebral column. What I say, notochord is the precursor of what vertebral column, otherwise called the backbone. Please, what is the function of this notochord? It provides support. It provides what? Support. It provides support. So that is what notochord, the notochord. Another striking feature they possess is what is called the dorsal holo or tubular, tubular nerve cord. All right? And that, apart from this protocol, they also possess another feature called they possess dorsal holo or tubular nerve cord. Now, please, does dorsal holo or tubular nerve cord is a precursor for uh, spinal cord? All right, it gives rise to the spinal cord and the gastro the the dorsal holo or tubular nerve cord runs throughout the back, all right, runs 
or, or through the back of the organism it is what found. It is a precursor or spinal, it is precursor of what spinal cord. That is, it gives rise to the spinal cord. Please take note of that. And it is associated with the nervous system. It is associated with the nervous system. And of course, we all know that the nervous system is divided into two parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Please take note of that. The notochord is a precursor for vertebral column, otherwise called backbone. All right, please. Uh, let me say something here. Now, the backbone, uh, that is each vertebrae that make up this backbone are separated by a structure called interventricular disc. Ventricular what? Disc. So interventricular disc is that structure that's that's, that joins each successive vertebrae. Look at the word vertebrae. That is B R O A E. All right. It it links it, it each vertebrae together. Please. It is what is called is because of backbone. While the dorsal bulo or tubular neck cord is the precursor of spinal cord, and it is associated with the nervous system. Mm -hmm. Now another feature they also possess is the uh, pharyngeal gill slits or the pharyngeal cleft as the case may be now pharyngeal gill or pharyngeal gill slits or pharyngeal cleft is formed uh, during what um neuro neurulation it is formed during Neurulation or listen, listen. Now, this pharyngeal gill slits, all right, is actually found around the throat region. It's found around the throat region. It's found around the throat region, and it gives rise to the gills, head, neck and ears all right what is the function of the pharyngeal gill slit or the pharyngeal cleft it enhances respiration or it permits gaseous exchange please take note of that it is very very important don't forget that the dorsal hollow or tubular nerve cord is produced from the ectoderm during what neurulation it is produced uh, from the ectoderm, which is one of the germ layers during neurulation. So that is, we have written three notochord, dorsal nerve, dorsal bolo, or tubular nerve cord, and pharyngeal gill slits. I said it is formed during neurulation, all right, and it is found around the throat region. It gives rise to the gills, head, neck and ears okay and it also permits gestures exchange the fourth one got a full load of load where is the border part the fourth one the fourth feature it possess uh, it possesses or they possess is the post post anal tail all right post anal tail is the word post means what after so post tail is that projection or the structure that um, that's extends further from the anus, all right? It is that structure that's, uh, that projects or extends further from the anus. That's what it's called what? post tail. post anal tail, all right? Please raise the board, wiper. excuse me, oh God of Nazareth. Please let me look for it. I'll pause the video now. Sorry. All right. So sorry about that. I thought I dropped it around this place. So let's. I've given you the the four distinctive characteristics possessed by the codex. Not to call the precursor of or the precursor for vertebral column. All right, and also the, uh, the dorsal hollow or tubular nerve cord is the precursor of the spinal cord 
and it is associated with uh, the nervous system, okay? And you have the third one called pharyngeal gill slit or pharyngeal cleft and it is associated with breathing or respiration or it permits gestures exchange. It is found around uh, the groove of the mouth or the throat region. It gives rise to the gills, head, neck and what? Ears. And you have the last one called the post tail. I said it is that structure of projection that extends further from the anus. So these are the four distinctive characteristics or features that these organisms possess. Now, apart from those ones we've listed already, now deuterostomes are they are silomates in the sense that they have true body cavity. All right, they are. You don't like that marker, please. They are silomates. Look at the word here. If they are silomates, it means they have silo. And this silo is for short called body cavity. Body cavity. And this silo we, we speak of here, all right, is it's it's formed from the acheteron. Ache Acheteron of the embryo during waiting gastrulation. The silom, which is the true, uh, which is called true body cavity, is is formed from the acheteron, all right, of the embryo during what gastrulation. And this silom, uh, which is called body cavity, is Filled with a fluid called silomic cavity, silomic what fluid? Silomic fluid. Now, what is the function of this silomic fluid? All right, it is it acts as a center uh, of what organization and also permit the easy movement of organs. All right, since it's a fluid, all right, it, it permits easy movement of uh, organs. It can actually prevent the warning out of certain organs and tissues in the human body or in the body of the organism that is found. Deuterostomes, they are silomates, they have true body cavity. So please, and of course, you agree with me that the acheteron, oh, there's N, the acheteron is lined, all right, with a tissue called the mesoderma tissue. Mesodermal tissue. The mesoderma tissue lines the acheteron and I said the system is formed uh, during gastrulation and it has fluid called silomic fluid which act as center of what organization and also permits easy movement of organs and tissues preventing the running out of them all right so that is for that that is I can call it silomic formation is that not correct silomic formation or silo formation now, another feature that these deuterostomes possess, now they also have, they also now go radial cleavage, radial waiting cleavage. During the embryonic development of deuterostomes, they undergo radial cleavage. What is the meaning of radial cleavage? Radial cleavage is a type of cell division, all right, that is parallel that is parallel or perpendicular or perpendicular to the ventral to the ventral axis to the ventral axis of the embryo radial cleavage is a type of cell division that is parallel or perpendicular to the ventral axis you could say it is arteriorally posteriorly modified it starts from the anterior joint and extends to the ventral region, like parallel, parallel to the ventral region, which is the lower part, while the upper part is the uh, dorsal region. Okay, ventral is also posterior. Uh, do, uh, sorry, ventral is posterior, anterior is uh, dorsal. All right. So that is for that. But please, all right. There are some uh, deuterostomes. That have been removed from sophelum deutero uh, stomata, right? Some organisms, uh, or you can say some deuterostomes, have been removed 
from subphylum deuteromacota. Oh God, deuteromacota. Deuterostomata, after is due to DNA what? analysis. Now, what are these deuterostomes that have been removed? They are two in number. All right. One of them is called the ecto. That is ectoprox, is it? Am I missing it? Ecto. Ectoprox and. Uh, and um, which one again? Um, okay, brown, brown, kill pots. All right, ectoprods and brown kill pots. These are the two deuterostomes that have been removed from subphylum deuteromycota due to DNA weighting analysis. Now, these two deuterostomes that have been removed are now categorized into a clad called Lofotokozwan Lofotoko Lofotokozwan Alright So this is the uh, the phyla or this is the phylum or the clad in which these two deuterostomes have been categorized in So please take note of that Now also during the developments, during the deuterostomes developments, all right, deuterostomes they undergo a process called deuterostomy, all right, deuterostomes they undergo a process called deuterostomy. Somebody out there might be asking, sir, what do you mean by deuterostomy? Deuterostomy is a phenomenon, all right, that of course during the embryonic development of deuterostomes in which the first in which the first part gives rise to the anus while the second part gives rise to the mouth i shall take it again i said deuterostomy is a phenomenon possessed by the deuterostomes during their embryonic development in which the first part of the first division produces the anus or gives rise to the anus while the second division or part gives rise to the mouth. However, this is not so in the uh, protostomes, all right? Protostomes are... Protostomes are the invertebrates. Examples are insects, insects such as bees, ants, butterfly, so on and so forth, mm? and the arachnids, arachnids such as scorpions and spiders, right? Then the mollusk, mollusk such as clams, snail, octopus, then the crustaceans, such as crayfish, um, crab, uh, shrimp, prawn. So all of these, all of these are called protostomes because their first division produces the mouth all right produces the mouth unlike the deuterostomes in which the first part of first division produces the anus all right so these are examples of protostomes please they exhibit deuterostomy i've told you the meaning of deuterostomy please the anus of deuterostomes the anus of deuterostomes uh, is actually formed from uh, from the blastopore from the blastopore of the embryo. All right, it is found it is found forming or developing from the blastopore of the embryo, and this blastopore of the embryo is found at it is opening in the uh, in the ventral region. And it occurs during gastrulation. 
all right and the mat is just found opposite uh, to the tube all right there's a tube formed during that situation and that is where the, the mat is found uh, situated to opposite all right opposite opposite in position opposite in meeting pose like opposite opposite okay so please that is for that hmm? the tarot stones also have what is called endoskeleton yeah all right the deuterium stones also have endoskeleton which is a type of skeleton found inside the body of an organism so please take note of that is there anyone have not dropped post anal uh, noto called dosoholo or tubular nerve called pharyngeal gate cleft or pharyngeal gate slits uh, post anal cell salomic formation uterus stone or development, radial cleavage, and I think we are done. Yeah, so we are done with the general features of the pterostomes. All right, and you know that the pterostomata is a subphylum under phylum called data. Now, phylum called data on the broad notes is divided into other theory subphyla. Now, I think that this is where the class actually begins fully. Now, there are three conspicuous sub uh, phyla under phylum called data. Uh, we have sub, we have sub phylum. Oh, it is recording. Oh, yes, 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 I have to check. And yes, I have to check. You don't understand. Now, the first one is called sub phylum uh, Urochordata. If I don't call it subphylum urochordata, I'll call it subphylum tunicata. All right, tunicata because they have the tunicate, which is an organ that covers their body surface. All right, subphylum urochordata. Now, what are the features of uh, of subphylum urochordata or to the cutter. Please take note. I told you just now that all chordates during okay, yes, I, I don't know if I said that all chordates in their embryonic or uh, in their in their early stage of life they retain all the distinct distinctive four features: notochord, pharyngeal gill slits, postanatal, and the dorsal hollow or tubular nerve cord. They possess these four characteristics. In their early stage of life, but as they metamorphose into the adult stage, some some parts is reduced or lost completely. Now, please listen to this. Urochordata is one of the subphylum that is found in phylum chordata. Now, what are the features of the organisms found here? Are called urochordates or tunicates. All right. Sure, they possess. In their, in their early stage or embryonic stage, they possess the four features. Isn't that correct? But as they metamorphose, listen, you know, as they metamorphose into their adult stage, the notochord, the notochord, all right, and the post anatel disappear, all right? As they metamorphose into their adult stage, all right? The notochord and post anatel disappear, okay, but the, the gill slits is retained. The gill slits is retained, which is meant for what respiration. And the dorsal holo or tubular nerve cord, the dorsal holo or tubular nerve cord, all right, is reduced into a single ganglion. All right. During their early stage of life, they have the four distinct features agreed. But as they metamorphose into the adult stage, the notochord and postanatal disappear. The gill slits is retained, but the dorsal hollow or tubular nerve cord is reduced into a single ganglion. I know, of course, it's, the plural is ganglia. Right, there are, there are nerves that are meant to transmit impulses from part of the body to another. 
which is to say that they've lost three parts. They only retain this. Is that not correct? This one, uh, that is the, the two disappeared. All right. Then the dorsal hollow or tubular nerve cord was then reduced. You get. So please, they, they've lost three parts, but they only retain the pharyngeal cleft or the pharyngeal gill slit. Hope it's clear enough. Now, this that is not all about urocordix. All right. Now. Now, these organisms, these organisms, they actually, uh, that is, they are, the, the, the adult forms, the adult forms are sessile, that is to say they are what? Attached. They are attached, or what? Sessile, all right? Please, the, that is, the less modified forms, the less modified the less modified forms are benthic organisms. They are benthic organisms. They are benthic what? organisms, which means that they are found in the benthic zone of a given aquatic environment. The less modified forms are benthic in form. That is, they are just found at the bottom or the substratum of the water of the water environment, or you speak, say they are attached. But the more modified forms, all right, or the more advanced form of the urocordates are actually pelagic. They are found in the pelagic region of the ocean, all right? They are found in the pelagic region of the ocean. This pelagic region means what? Open, open sea or open ocean, all right? And please, these guys, now, only the fact that they are found in the pelagic region of the ocean, what does that tell you? It means that they are all marine organisms, okay? They are found in marine environments. Examples of urocordates are the sonar. The sonar is one of the known uh, uh, urocordates. Another is the botrylos. The botrylos is a compounded form of, of the urocordate. So this is a simple form and this is what? The compounded or the complex form of uh, urocordate. I believe that is clear enough. So that is all the features that should be, um, that should be assimilated or committed to memory when you are trashing phylum cordata or evolution of the cordates. So that is the first subphylum. So shall we proceed? The next subphylum is subphylum cephalocordata. All right, Cepha that is subphylum, subphylum uh, cephalocordata, cephalocordata. Cephalocordata. Please, please take note of this. Uh, please, the the urocordates or the tunicates do not have a particular reproductive mode, which is to say that they could be oviparous, viviparous, or ovoviviparous. You know what that means, right? Please, fertilization in tunicates is external. That is based on the species involved. They could be oviparous. Right, they could be egg laying tunicates, they could be viviparous, or they don't lay eggs. The, the, that is the, 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 that is the offsprings are just found fertilized internally, or they are ovoviviparous. Okay, so please take note of that, it is very, very important. The difference between ovoviviparous and viviparous is that the viviparous organisms possess placenta, which is that embryonic membrane that joins the mother to the fetus. But the ovoviviparous organisms, they lack placenta. All right, so they are called aplacetic organisms, while the viviparous organisms are called placentic organisms. So please take note of that. Now, subphylum cephalocordata. Hmm. Now, what are the features of a uh, subphylum cephalocordata. Very easy. Now, now, number one feature of 
Okay, uh, at least if I don't call it cephalocordata, I'll call it acraniata. If I don't call if I don't call them acranies, all right, I'll call them lancets. All right. Now, if they are a, if they belong to acraniata or if they are acrania, it tells you that they lack cranium. All right, which means that they do not possess skull. All right, so please take note of that. Hmm? Now, what are the features of these guys? What are the features of the cephalocodids? Please, these organisms they are all pigmented. They are waiting on pigmented. Two, so they are bilaterally flattened. They are bilaterally waiting flattened and elongated. By God's grace, I will just try to give you the diagram of a cephalocodex, right? They are unpigmented agreed. They are bilaterally flattened and elongated agreed. Theory, they do not have a recognizable head. They do not have a conspicuous or recognizable and specialized word head please take note of that number four feature that these organisms possess is that they have what is called myotomes the word myotomes means muscles that are arranged in block all right muscles that are clustered you call it what myotomes all right of course these guys they have notochord, sure, they have notochord, and they also have the dorsoholo or tubular nerve cord. And this uh, dorsal or holo tubular nerve cord is made up of waiting muscle fibers, muscle waiting fibers that enhance the, like this, this muscle fibers enhance movements, all right, it increases. If, uh, that is swimming or, or efficiency of what movement. So another feature that these guys also possess is that they have their sense organs. Their sense organs are situated in a place called Siri. That is C I R R I. That is where their sense organs are situated, and they, it is found anteriorly. It is found anteriorly, so please take note of that. Now, these same, these same organisms, they also have what is called a triopore. A triopore is that opening at the posterior or ventral region of the organism that serves as exit for water. It is the region where water leaves the body of the organism, a triopore. Take note of that. Now, there are, there are certain members known. Don't forget that these organisms, they have notochord, pharyngeal gill slits meant for respiration. They have postanatal, which is that projection that, that's, that's, uh, that's extended uh, further away from the anus, post, that is what, after. Now, what are some examples of cephalocordates? The amphiosus. The amphiosus is a good example, formerly called bronchial, uh, bronchial, bronchial stones. All right, bronchial stone. Let me use similar. If I don't call it amphiosus, I'll call it bronchial stone. The full name is bronchiostoma. Bronchial stoma nengirensis. The full name is Bronchiostoma nengirensis. All right. So it is one of the known uh, branchialized cephalocodex or one of the known lancets. I told you they are also called lancets or. Acrania, all right, or acrinates because they lack 
uh, scope or, or brain box or the lack of cranium. Another known example of these guys are uh, the AC metron. AC metron. AC metron is also called epi epigonitis. If I don't call it a symmetron, I'll call it a pigonitis. These members fall under subphylum cephalocordata or incriniata, all right, or lacenta, as the case may be. So these are the features of these organisms. Don't forget that these organisms, they have separate sexes. They have separate sexes. If they have separate sexes, it means that they are waiting dioecious. Now they are what? Dioecious in form. So please take note that fertilization in these guys is external and they are oviparous. They possess oviparous mode of production and they exhibit waiting external fertilization, right? Apart from that, apart from that, do you know how their gonads are arranged? Their gonads are just found uh, situated directly uh, to their atrium. All right? Their gonads, such as the testes and ovaries, are situated directly to their atrium. Please take note of that. Of course, you know what atrium is, right? Atrium is one of the, one of the divisions of, of the hearts. Of the organism, right? We know we have there are some organisms that have four heart chambers, two heart chambers, three heart chambers, and two heart chambers. They have one atrium and one uh, ventricle, all right? So please take note of that. That is all about phylum, cephalo, that is about a soft phylum, not a, not a phylum now, soft phylum, cephalo, data. They are oviparous, they have separate sexes, fertilization is external, and they have, of course, they have the mitochondrial pharyngeal display, they are unpigmented, all right? They have a triangle, which is that opening that's, that's uh, okay, that opening through which water leaves the body of the organism, all right? And their dorsal hollow nerve cord uh, is, uh, is made up of muscle fibers that trigger movements or that increases the efficiency of what movement. Now the third member of these guys is the subphylum vertebrata. Subphylum vertebrata or subphylum craniata. If they are called vertebrata or they are called craniata, what does that tell you? It means that they have vertebrae, that is, they have vertebrae which in colon, they have backbone. If they, are, if, they are, if they are also called cranids, all right, it means that they have cranium or brain box or skull, all right. I've started giving you the, the features. They have, they have notochord, they have dorsal hollow, uh, tubular uh, nerve cord, they also have a pharyngeal view slate. They possess vertebrae, there's backbone, and they have cranium, skull, or brain box. Now, the, the vertebrate is, it is, that is, they are, they, are, they, are, they are everywhere. In fact, they are the most commonly known organisms on earth, all right, just as you have. I believe you know that humans also share certain features with the codings, all right? So they are also under this idiot. Do you understand that? Now, the, the, the vertebrate, uh, so far the vertebrata, or uh, the vertebrates have lots of features, all right? Some are viparous, some are ovoviparous, while some are oviparous, all right? These guys, they, they possess parental care, all right? They have the ability to, to cater for the, for the young ones, all right, that's for their young progenies, okay? Now, all fishes. Now, you know that um, uh, the chondrictis, chondrictis, 
osteopsis. All right, they are fishes, aren't they? Now, chondroptes. All right, this guy uh, or these guys they belong to elasmobranchiomorphy. All right, elasmobranchiomorphy is like it's a class, class elasmo. Branchiomorphy. Alright, that is the class they belong. Alright, and this guy, in fact, to be much more specific, the chondrictes and the ostrictes, they belong to uh, class, they belong to class, um, okay, super class, rather, super class, super class, gnatostomata. Alright, gnato. To matter. It is a super class. Alright? Super class gnatostomata. So class uh, so class conjunctives and what ostructives, alright? That is the conjunctives are the cartilaginous fishes such as skates, uh, sharks. And rays, they all belong to this class, all right. While the bony fishes belong to this class, so they are collectively called gnatostomes. They belong to super class gnatostomata because they have jaw, all right. They have what's in jaw, they have jaw, they have jaw. In a previous class, we'll be looking at these organisms properly, all right. Please take note of that. Another super class is not under this vertebrata, but let me just bring it up. Okay, yes, I can include it. Yes, all right, they, 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 they can be placed as vertebrata and craniata. That is the super class agnata. Agnata means they are jawless, but these ones they have jaw, so they are, they are jawed organisms, so they are called gnatostones. But the ones that don't possess jaw are called agnatostomes, all right? They are jawless. Examples, okay, this is a superclass. The subclass is a subclass myzini. That is where you have the hackfishes. And you now have another subclass, uh, cephalaspidomorphy. That is where you have the lampreys, all right? So please, this is where we call it a day in this class. In our in a, in a other video, we shall be looking at the striking features of these organisms mentioned there. If you really enjoyed the class, please endeavor to subscribe, like, share, and comment. It is very, very important. Do have a wonderful day.